and the jinn race we have created before, before Adam. And they lived on earth for 2,000 years. The jinn in these 2,000 years, the jinn are not the smartest. Allah gave the jinn a lot of strength and Allah gave them a lot of powers and they could do many things. And the jinn were living on this earth before Adam alayhi salam. And there were nations and there were tribes and they were living and they were getting married and there was descendants and so forth. But they were so corrupt on earth. They caused so much corruption. They killed each other, deceived each other, cheated on each other, took, uh, took the rights from each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels to fight them. And this army of the angels fought them and pushed them out of the land and made them live on the islands of the sea. interestingly enough, used to be one of the highest worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a superstar. He was incredible. Iblis was a worshipper. He was an abid. And it was interesting to note that because of his ability to choose, if he makes the right decision, he gets more points. The angels don't have a choice. All the actions they do, that's how they're built. But if someone has the choice to do right or wrong and they choose the right, that's plus points for them. So Iblis used to hang out with the angels because the angels are the top of praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Iblis was so good that he was able to kick it with the angels. He actually worked among the angels literally but he wasn't an angel, he was a jinn made of fire. The angels are made of light. He had a special rank, he was God fearing. He was devout. He was a worshipper, wallahi. And he believed in the oneness of God and his might and power and everything and he turned to him, he was a righteous servant of God. Iblis was going to be tested with his righteousness. So Allah said to his angels one day, Inni khaliqum basharam min teen. He said to them, O oh my angels, I am about to create a creation, a being made of clay. Our father Adam our father, the first of all the prophets, the first of all mankind, Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled this plan. And Iblis didn't like that. And the angels know that there are angels made of light and Allah had created the jinns made of fire. Allah only knows what else he has created before us. We don't know. We haven't been informed. But now the angels are told that a creature is going to be created from clay. Now the angels had known the jinns before what they had done. They shed blood and corrupted on earth. This earth was here before us as according to the Quran. And the jinns lived here and they still do. And they corrupted and shed blood. So Allah sent the angels down and they actually had a battle. So the angels replied. They said, O oh, our Lord, are you going to create a creature on earth that will shed blood again and corrupt again? When we glorify your name, they're not questioning, but they're asking to seek knowledge the confused. The jinns, look what they did. We don't understand the reason behind creating another creation when they're going to shed blood and corrupt. What are they actually saying? They're afraid. They're saying in other words, Oh, our Lord, are you displeased with us? Because we're glorifying. Here we are. But obviously they didn't understand what's happening. God did not explain it to them because they will not understand until they see. So all he said was this. He said, I know that which you just do not know. When Allah created Adam alayhi salam, Iblis had heard the angels what they had asked and everybody's talking about it and Iblis he's, he's starting to think here what is so special about this creature which God had created curiosity and at the same time something began to develop in his heart a form of jealousy why here is Iblis among the rank of the angels wanting to please his Lord loves his Lord wants to please him and now something had come up which he had never anticipated, never thought of, and suddenly he feels something strange coming out. He could have controlled it, but he let it take over, consume him. It was the jealousy. Jealousy began. So he went to look at this creature and he saw it. 
It didn't look too impressive to him. It was made of clay, it's dark, it was dark in color because there was no soul in it, it was just clay. He tapped it and he kicked it and it made a ringing sound. And he was able to, th to flow through it. Because he's created from a less denser material, which is f flames of fire, he was able to flow through this body. And he found, as in the hadith, he found that we were hollow. So he thought, you are a weak creature. As time went, Allah left the body of Adam alayhi salam like that. And every time Iblis looked at it, he felt fear a bit. Looking at a dead body is quite frightening, isn't it? Well, imagine seeing something like that. Iblis saw it and he was frightened. But at the same time, he's trying to beat his fear and say, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. Now, the angels, on the other hand, said among each other, said, look, inshallah, God willing, he's not displeased with us. They were just fearful. Is God displeased with them? Have they lacked in their duties? That's all. Different to Iblis. Iblis is like jealousy. He's not going to be better than me. I'm going to be better than him. What's so special about him? Like that. I will always be God's favorite. And, eat, and, I'm, going to, and I'm going to do everything about it to be that way. It's like that. Allah left him there until that jealousy developed more and more and more. And now it turned into prou proudiness, arrogance. Jealousy turned into proudiness. Allah created Adam, put his soul into him. Story goes on. And he brought Adam alayhi salam before the angels. He said to them, prostrate to Adam. The angels all obeyed. There's a letter there. The letter before the word sajadu, which means they prostrated, there's a letter. It says fa, fa sajadu. Fa sajadu means they immediately prostrated. No hesitation. Then Allah says, illa iblis. Except for iblis, he didn't prostrate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Iblis, why have you not done what I have commanded you to do? Why haven't you bowed to Adam when I told you to bow? By the way, this sajda was not of worship. It wasn't a sajda of ibadah. It was a sajda of respect, of ihtiram. And so he commanded him. So Iblis said, no. He said, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. You created me from fire and you made him from clay. The first instance of racism ever to have existed. Iblis said, I'm better than him. Because imagine, can you imagine this? We read this story like it's, like it's folk tales. Imagine disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly to his face, Jalla wa ala. Shaitan is literally in the presence of God and he says no. Then Allah further explains why Abba, he chose to, re to refuse. He actually objected. He refused. So it was a conscious refusal. So you don't think that he couldn't. He could, but he consciously refused. Telling us, that is the same for us as humans. You also have a choice. And if you don't, it's because you consciously chose not to, knowingly. Wastakbar, not only did he refuse, Allah is telling us why he refused. The reason he refused is because he allowed himself to be proud. Proud as in not happy, arrogant. And that resulted in him becoming among the disbelievers. He hid the truth, kafir, the, literally the word kafir means to hide the truth deep and to cover it up. That's what kafir means. Knowing the truth, hiding it, denying it. So kufr can also mean denial, not just disbelief, denial of the truth, knowing it. Allah says, what prevented you, O Iblis, to prostrate to one who I have created with my own hands? Allah created him directly. What did Iblis respond? Qala, ana khayrun ana minhu. Khayrun minhu. I am better than him. I am better than him. I am better than him. Why? Why? Khalaqtani Khalaqtani na. Na. You made me out of fire. Out of clay. clay. I'm from fire. fire. He's, from, he's, from, he's clay. from clay. He's from rubbish. I'm fire, he's clay, they cannot, they cannot be equal, I'm better than, I'm higher, I'm, I'm, I'm right up here, man. He's down here. Allah then said to him, okay, very well, are you adamant about your decision? He said, I am adamant. Allah gave him chances, he continued. Then Allah finally said to him, I created him and I am the one who commanded you. 
you have disobeyed me outright and arrogantly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after a conversation says you are cursed. You are cursed. You are a rajim. You are shaitan al rajim. Interesting thing happens next. He raises his, his hands or he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He makes a request. What do we call a request in Arabic language? When someone makes a request to Allah, we call that a dua, right? He makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, make me amongst the mundirin or give me, uh, give me light, give me life until the day of resurrection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qala innaka min al -mundarin. You get what you want. Some of us feel sometimes like we commit too many mistakes. We make too many sins. There's no way Allah will answer our dua. But look at shaitan. He directly disobeyed Allah and then instantly after, what did he do? He asked Allah for subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. And what did Allah do? Allah granted his dua and said, innaka min al -mundarin. No one is too far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask for anything. No one. If shaitan can do it, you can do it and Allah will answer your dua. Moving on. And then shaitan, after this, after he gets what he wants, he makes a challenge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, wa He swore an oath by God's honor and his might. By your might and by your power, I will lead them all astray. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He swears by Allah's honor and might, acknowledging his might and honor. And then he tells him, what you've done, I'm going to wreck it. It's like saying, I believe you. You are more powerful than me and you are mighty and you can do anything you want. I know that. But you know what you've done? I'm going to wreck it. Allah says to him, you want to lead them astray? That's the challenge. He said, I'm going to lead all his children astray. I'm going to go to every one of them. I'm going to lead them astray. Go ahead. Climb on top of any one of them that you are able to. Stafziz is an Arabic word used for climbing on a horse and steering it. You climb on a horse and you steer it if you're a good horseman. He says, Istafziz, be a good horseman and climb on, pot on top of the servants who want to be horses for you and try to delude them away with your voice. What's shaitan's voice? I'll leave it up to you to analyze what is shaitan's voice, do you think? Since you can't hear him, what is his voice there for? I'll leave that. And then he said, and try to delude them away by showing them materialism, materialistic things. Let them be involved in materialistic things. In other, in other words, their cars and their homes and their clothes and their money and their this and their, their desires. And associate with them, like be a partner. And with their money, use their money against them. Wa'idhum. And, and give them false hopes or false promises. Allah says, but the shaitan never promises anyone except deception. He does not mean anything he says. I'm going to tell you something. My true servants, you will not have power over them. Then the Iblis replied, he said, Okay, I will lead them all astray. Except your servants among them who are sincere. Those are the only types of people, my brothers and sisters, whom Iblis and the Shayateen have absolutely no power over. The ones whose hearts are absolutely sincere. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد خلقنا الإنسان من صلصال من حمأ مسنون والجان خلقناه من قبل من نار السموم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني خالق بشرا بشرا من صلصال من حمأ مسنون فإذا سويته ونفخت فيه من روحي فقعوا له, فقعوا له ساجدين فسجد الملائكة كلهم أجمعون إلا إبليس أبى أن يكون مع الساجدين قال يا إبليس ما لك ألا تكون مع الساجدين قال لم أكن لأسجد لبشر خنقته من صلصال من صلصال من حمأ مسنون قال فاخرج منها فإنك رجيم وإن عليك اللعنة إلى يوم الدين 
قال رب فأنظرني إلى يوم يبعثون قال فإنك من المنظرين إلى يوم الوقت المعلوم قال رب بما أغويتني لأزينن لهم في الأرض ولأغوينهم أجمعين إلا عبادك منهم المخلصين قال هذا صراط علي مستقيم إن عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان إلا إلا من اتبعك من الغاوين وإن جهنم لموعدكم أجمعين لها سبعة أبواب وإن جهنم لموعدهم أجمعين لها سبعة أبواب لكل باب منهم جزء مقسوم إن المتقين في جنات وعيون المتقين في جنات وعيون ادخلوها بسلام ادخلوها بسلام آمنين The shaitan is your enemy so take him as an enemy do not take him as anything else